Coming up on Mountain News this morning, Governor Matt Bevin says his administration has crafted a new pension bill for lawmakers to consider in a special session. Plus, Representative Robert Goforth is challenging Governor Matt Bevin to a Republican primary debate. And the contract is up for Stray Hearts Animal Shelter, and now county officials are taking over. We will tell you what that means. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. It is 631 on Wednesday, May the 1st. I'm Will Puckett. Thank you for tuning in to Mountain News This Morning. Past two days, beautiful. Today should be about the same, but the rest of this week, it's downhill from here. Let's bring in Brandon this morning, give you a better breakdown. Brandon, good morning. Good morning. The slide is underway, my friend. We've got one more nice day, as you mentioned, and then we'll start to see that front to start to affect us and bring us chances for showers and storms. But for us allergy sufferers, it's going to be a welcome relief. Let's take a look at the camera outside WIMT this morning. Sunrise beginning, and we'll see that going on here fully in about seven minutes. We're looking at Stonecrest over in Prestonsburg. Not quite there yet. A few more clouds there, but live pinpoint Doppler radar nice and quiet. Temperatures 50s, 60s, and 70s, and we're on our way to about 85 this afternoon. It's going to be short like weather as we get into the rest of the daytime hours. I have the rest of the forecast coming up in just a few minutes, Will. All righty, Brandon. Thank you, sir. Well, Governor Matt Bevin says his administration has crafted a new pension bill for lawmakers to consider in a special session. Bevin has not said when he will call lawmakers back to the Capitol. The measure aims to give regional universities, county health departments, and other agencies relief from the spike in pension costs. We've tightened it up. We've made it better. It's a slimmer bill. It's an easier to follow bill. It provides more latitude and options to the quasis themselves. So they will have more choice in what their future and their employees' futures look like. While some lawmakers believe the special session could come Monday, Governor Bevin told reporters yesterday it probably will not happen Monday because they want people to have time to digest the bill, but sooner than not in the month of May. He says if they wait too long, they run into graduations, holidays, and summer vacations. Representative Robert Goforth is challenging Governor Matt Bevin to a Republican primary debate. In a Facebook post, Goforth called on the governor to discuss the real issues with him. Last night, their running mates were in Bourbon County for Lincoln Day dinner. It's a night to raise money for the Republican Party, as well as giving primary candidates a place to share their message. I think a lot of folks expect to hear from candidates. If you ask for someone's vote, it's important for them to see you. They can ask you questions um, and they want to hear what your ideas are. We've been out. We've been uh, all over the state. We've been in western Kentucky, northern Kentucky, east Kentucky, everything in the middle. Um, we've really been doing a lot on the ground as far as going into the courthouses, talking to people there, talking to people on the town um, squares, and that's where we find most of our support. William Woods and Ike Lawrence are also running in the Republican primary. The Democratic candidates for governor took the stage in Louisville. Longtime state representative Rocky Atkins, Attorney General Andy Bashir, and former state auditor Adam Edlin will participate in WDRB's debate. The candidates were asked a variety of questions on big topics facing Kentucky politics. Out of the gate, they were asked about the looming special session and the state pension crisis. Here are their responses. By staying with the 2013 reforms, making sure we keep a defined benefit for teachers across Kentucky to make sure we keep growing out of this problem we're in. We're on the right track. We need to find the funding moving forward, and I have a place to find that to make sure it happens. We've got to start with expanded gaming, which we can pass because for the first time, we're going to dedicate 100% of the revenue to our pension systems. Folks, that is $550 million a year we can put in every single year to help fund it. The second thing we're going to do is legalize medicinal marijuana, which is going to raise another $50 million. And we need to be open to new sources of revenue that range from casino style gambling to uh, closing tax loopholes. But we've got to acknowledge what got us into this mess in the first place is results as it relates to the Kentucky retirement system. For too long, this system was run for the benefit of the good old boys and the governors who put them there. 
Now, Jeff Young of Lexington is also running for governor on the Democratic side. He was not a part of the debate. The Republican Party of Kentucky released a statement after the debate saying, quote, Kentuckians deserve to keep moving forward with the momentum Republican leadership has brought to our state. You can read their full statement right now on WYMT.com. A gruesome find back in January in Dayton, Ohio. WDTN says that's when police say Mary Alice Lahoon's body was found. Family members tell us she was from Boyd County. Police say her body was found in a plastic storage bin. It's still unclear how or when she died and no one has been charged. Family members asked to remain anonymous when they sat down with our sister station out of fear of retaliation. They say their loved one was living in Dayton with her granddaughter, who they have not seen in three years. It's nothing that she would have ever, ever dreamed of. Nope. And, and none of us would have ever dreamed of. And but yet we found out this and we're just all devastated as her, you know, demise. She was treated like garbage, just garbage. Our sister station reached out to Dayton police for an update on the case and any possible charges or persons of interest, but those messages still have not been returned. Police in Bell County say scammers are using local phone numbers for their latest scam. Sheriff Mitchell Williams says the last few days police have gotten calls from locals saying someone is pretending to be from police agencies asking for donations, but the calls they're not legitimate. Police say while the calls are made from local numbers, they could be coming from anywhere. Uh, the biggest thing that I would say, if it's over the phone, just hang up. Don't even fool with it. Police say if you suspect you have been a victim of the scam, contact local law enforcement to report the incident. Deputies in Laurel County need your help finding a pair of debit card thieves. Police say the two women pictured here used a stolen debit card to buy hundreds of dollars worth of merchandise at the local Wal at the London Walmart. If you recognize these two, you should call the Laurel County Sheriff's Office at 606-864-6600. You can remain anonymous. State health officials say the total number of E. coli cases has gone up in the past week, but they say the outbreak looks to be slowing down in the Commonwealth. There are now, there are now 69 total cases in Kentucky. That is up from 65 last week. Federal health agencies have linked contaminated ground beef as the source of the outbreak. A group of hospitals in Kentucky and West Virginia are suing opioid manufacturers. The lawsuit accused the pharmaceutical companies of criminal conspiracy and spreading misinformation about the drugs that they make. Civil and criminal conspiracy, just a few of the accusations brought against opioid manufacturers and distributors. Most notably, McKesson, Americor Amerisource, Burgeon, Cardinal Health, and the creator of OxyContin, Purdue Pharma. We claim that they conspired together to create a false narrative that long-term opioid use for chronic pain was safe and the, the uh, risk of addiction was low, when in fact they knew that neither was the case. The goal of the lawsuit is not for the hospitals to reimburse themselves for their losses, but to create a strategic plan for fighting addiction. The contract, it is up for the Stray Hearts Animal Shelter, and now county officials are taking over. Yesterday was the last day for the rescue. In the past, the county ran the shelter as a kill shelter, euthanizing the animals after just five days, after just a five day holding period. Now, District 5 Magistrate Victor Sloan says euthanasia will be their last resort. We did have a, a contract with Stray Hearts. My understanding is that's fell through but we're still willing to work with those folks and allow them to come up and pick up the animals that they feel like they can adopt out and rescue. Right now, there are no dogs inside the shelter. The dog warden will now have the responsibility of picking up dogs, plus maintenance work. Today is the first full day the county will control the shelter. It is open from 2 in the evening until 4 in the evening. Well, it's something that we all likely strive for to make our communities and homes a better place. But turning ideas into action is much easier said than done. And those who find the motivation to do so, well, they should be celebrated. That is what happened last night at the Hazard Perry County Chamber of Commerce Civic Night. WMT's Justin Case went to the event to help shine a light on the men and women who are making a difference here without expecting anything in return. Please join me in honoring the young woman of the year, Mae Hummison. 
From the Young Woman of the Year Award to the Community Impact Award, these men and women are working to make the area a better place. City Commissioner Luke Glazer says these winners, including May Humiston, do it without expecting anything in return. Even if they're the most humble individuals in the world, they do so much that it's impossible to not see. So she is the executive director of a nonprofit that she pretty much started. And in her free time, she does beautification projects. Uh, she, uh, along with uh, Mr. Brayman, you know, built the trail system at Perry County Park. And she's currently, she didn't want to come tonight because she's building signs for it. Survivor winner and Eastern Kentucky native Nick Wilson was the keynote speaker at the event. He says even while competing on the show, he always had the mountains on his mind. It was a beautiful place and uh, the water is beautiful, the view and everything. Uh, it was such a great experience, but, you know, it still went home. Like, I couldn't wait to get back home. Much like the award winners, Wilson says it is the people of Eastern Kentucky that make this place great. In Appalachia, we have such a huge sense of community and a sense of pride and a sense of helping one another in our community. And the overall theme of the event? Well, it was pretty hard to miss. And you may not have done something for me, but that doesn't mean I can't do something for you. Sacrificing time and energy to preserve and grow the great things that make this place home. Now, the Hazard Perry County Chamber of Commerce Civic Night is a yearly event. You can look for this story on our website for a full list of the award winners. Well, thank you for joining us on Mountain News this morning. Don't go anywhere. We will have a pet from a local shelter looking for a good home in our studio in just a couple of minutes.